three big ideas. Most of the evil in this world is highly coordinated and is fulfilling biblical prophecy to the letter. Historical and current events are being influenced by evil to make the appearance of the Antichrist highly probable within a generation. Though the world is not yet in an apocalyptic state, the forces of organized evil affect us all now and must be resisted like never before. Hey y'all, it's Coach in the Fight here. Looking at some, looking at a class I wrote a couple of years ago. It's called The Book of the Covenant. Now you guys, um, bear with me. Now it's been a long time since I've seen this class. I wrote it myself. It's all verses here. He's like, well, you ain't actually write nothing. It's all verses in there. But I kind of put it together uh, myself. So, but it's been a long time. And, you know, so I'm going to jump right on it. It's, I'm going to act like it's the first time I've ever seen it. But before we get into it, let me jump into this. All right, this is a little bit of an impromptu class. Like I said, I wrote this a long time ago, so I'm going to jump on it. All right, the first verse I got here is Matthew 5. Um, it's talking about 17 to 20. All of this is King James Verse. And I'm going to read the verse. It says, Think not that I'm come to destroy the law. Well, let me slow down a little bit because this is important here. This is where the problem lies is, is they think that the Messiah came to destroy the law or to get rid of the law. Well, notice here he says that he didn't, didn't come to destroy the law. And destroy the law I got there in my little brackets, kill or do away with the law. So in other words, the Messiah didn't come to kill or do away with the law or the prophets. He says, I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. Now when you look up the word fulfill, it means complete or perfect. So the Messiah came to fulfill the law, to perfect the law, whereas we're getting that, you know, he came to destroy the law or to get rid of the law. OK, and then I got another reference here for uh, Romans 10 and 4. Let me go look at it. Like I said, guys, it's been a long time since I did this class. I do know it's a good class. I just don't remember, you know, quite the method for putting it together. Sure, it has something to do with this verse. So we're going to go over here and look. For Christ is the end of the law of righteousness to everyone that believeth. Now, here's another verse that, that, that you know, we're using along the same thing, where it says Christ is the end of the law. Now, a lot of people want to stop there and say Christ ends the law. And you say, well, doesn't it say there that he ended the law? But we got we to gotta understand that the word end is not used the way that, you know, the Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Doug wants us to know, think that it's used. Okay, so now we look here, it says that Christ was the end of the law, but when we're looking here at one of the definitions for the end, it says uh, come or bring to a final point. And that was the, the Messiah, what he did. You know, we said it, we learned that the, the Old Testament was the schoolmaster. Well, you know, the Messiah came in, he ended that school. He made it, you know, it, it ain't school no more. It's real life now that you have the, the Messiahs on the scene. But it said Christ is the culmination of the law and that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. So that there may be righteousness for everyone that believes. So what does culmination mean? The highest or the climactic point of something, especially as attained after a long time. Right? So that doesn't say he ended it or he got rid of it, which is the common misconception of the scriptures that he got rid of it or he ended it, that he, that he stopped it. Okay. Now it says, Verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. Now we got to understand that the Lord's plan is that heaven is going to pass away and earth is going to pass away. Right? The whole planet goes up in flames, so the earth is going to go away. But the law is never going to get changed. That's what he's saying here. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law until all be fulfilled. So the people who want to tell you that the Christ got rid of the, the law, they have to stop right there at 17. They can't go to 18. They can't go to 19 either. Watch. For whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments. So if the Lord got rid of him, why is he threatening you now? If he's gotten rid of him, if he dead away from him, why, why come? It sounds like a threat. And shall teach men so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. So everybody who's saying that there is no more law because the Messiah came is going to be considered least in the king, kingdom of heaven. Well, you jump over in the third testament or Jeremiah 14, 14, you see, they would be glad if that's the only bad thing to happen. Is you call them least in the kingdom of heaven? No, they're going to get punished severely. And those who go to them for knowledge, wisdom, understanding are going to be punished too. Talking about the false prophets. You know, you have to go to the scripture. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. 
So how did the Messiah do away with the law in verse 17 when here in verse 19 he's saying whoever will do them is going to be considered great in the kingdom of heaven. No, like I said, they had to stop way back down 17. Look at 20. For I say unto you that except your righteousness that exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, now who are these? The scribes and the Pharisees are the same people that, that we're talking about. The preachers and the pastors today are telling you don't need a law. Well, he's telling you right now, unless your righteousness exceeds theirs, you shall in no case enter the kingdom of heaven. What is he saying? If you're not more righteous and holier than they, you ain't going to heaven? That's what he say there. I mean, I can add to it a little bit just to help clarify things, let you know what the kingdom of heaven is all about and all of that kind of stuff. Or I could just let you go with what it says. If that, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees and the scribes, which is meaning if you, if you ain't got at least as much righteousness as your prophet or your pastor or the Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Judd, you ain't going and you ain't, you ain't in no wise going to enter the kingdom of heaven. And I got another verse there. Let's see. What's this Roman 10? It got me in trouble the last time. But I'm going to go see. I ain't scared of the scripture. I know what it say. You know. Romans 10 and 3 coming out of the same chapter says, For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have submitted themselves have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. So the people who are telling you this have gone about to create their own righteousness. They have to. They have to create their own righteousness because looking here at what, you know, chapter 5 says on down in 19 and 20, it doesn't match up with what's there in 17. So what do they do? They read 17 and then they have to start making stuff up in order to make it fit. They can't tell you 18, 19 or 20 and then they have to start making up what's actually in 17 to make it fit. And it, what they're doing is they're making it fit their own personal lifestyle. Like it says over there in Romans, you know, 10 and 3, you know, so it says, and going about to establish their own righteousness and have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God, which is the law. Anybody who knows the scripture can tell you that the righteousness of the, of the Lord ain't nothing but the law. What else is it? You know what I'm saying? Sitting around talking about, you know, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He promised you that there will be a lot of people calling his name that ain't going to be saved. You know, say, I never knew you. And this is why. This is serious business. You know, look at Galatians 3 and verse 19 through 29 in the King James Version. It says, Wherefore then serveth the law? Wherefore then serveth the law? Meaning, why do you do it? Now, it says, I got here, notice that this is an added word. Okay, so let's go to Galatians 3 and 19 and see why I said it was an added word. Let's go see. 19. For whosoever, yeah, it's, 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 an, it's an italicized word. And, it, and so if you read it without the added word in there, it says, why then the law? Now look over here at the New International Version. It says, why then was the law given at all? Which kind of makes sense. That, that service part is supposed to be taken out. That's an added word. And, and, and it says, why then the law? In other words, why do we have the law? You know, why do we have it in the first place? You know, it was added because of transgressions, right? So we had to have the law kind of like the way we have to have police now. If we didn't have bad people, we didn't have, we didn't have to have police. So it was added because of transgressions. Till the seed come in to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of the mediator. So, you know, it's talking about, it's, it's talking about there in 20, you know, how we have promises associated with this thing. And so the law was there. It was given by Moses, but it was there until the pro until the seed come when the promise was made. Now, is he talking about the second coming of Christ? It seems to me, guys, like a lot of these rules and, 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 and laws and stuff in the Bible are not arbitrary and capricious, but it seems like they're somehow tied to the tribulation, meaning that if you don't do them in during the tribulation or when, when you really need to be doing them, you, you, you're going to find yourself making mistakes that's going to cost you and your family their life. You know, So the, the schoolmaster or the law was given so we can, you know, prepare for this tribulation. Now, I also believe that after this tribulation has passed, you know, a lot of these laws are not going to be so important. Remember he said the laws will be written on our heart and, you know, and right now they're, they're in hard black and white paper so nobody can get them wrong. Well, if they're written on our heart, then that's going to leave room for interpretation. But there's not another antichrist promise. There's not another war. There's no more famines, no more pestilence, no more diseases, no more, you know, we don't have to worry about unclean animals and that kind of thing no more. So it's kind of like it was like it says there, it says, why then the law till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of the mediator. Now, look at 20. Now, the mediator is a mediator. Now, a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Now, let's go over here to Romans 3 and 29. I'm starting to remember where these come from. 
Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. So let's go back and see what we're talking about here. So now the mediator is not the mediator of one, you know, but God is one. Mm, let's go on. Is the law then against the promises of God? Right. Is the law then against the promises of God? Remember, you know, the Galatians, I believe this is Paul talking. Let me look right quick. I got the book open. Yep. It says the epistle of Paul, the apostle to the Galatians. Now, remember Paul. Paul was the Gentile teacher. Now, you ain't a Gentile. If you listen to this, you ain't no Gentile. You say, well, I'm, I'm, my forefathers held from the mountains of Caucasia. I'm a Gentile. No. No, no, no. You got to understand, Israel went away. You may see them. They may still look like Israel. You know, they, they still have some promises and stuff associated with their life. But we are grafted in Israel now. We count just as much as they are. We are the children, too. So he says, is, is the law against the promises of God? Uh, God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. OK, so um, he couldn't give you a law for righteousness that, you know, we, that wouldn't have made sense. He had to give us the details that lead up to the righteousness. The guys and I, I don't know I'm messing this up, but I'm going to try to let's see if I can make it a little bit further. But the scripture has concluded all under sin, right, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. OK, so we got it. We're going to go to Romans 32, 11 and 32. For God has concluded them all in unbelief that he might have mercy upon them. But the scripture has concluded all in the sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept. On, OK, so faith came with the Messiah, right? He brought us faith. We didn't have a lot of faith before the Messiah came. We had the law before the Messiah came. We were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Okay, so remember the law was our, the, was our schoolmaster. It says it right there. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us into Christ, that we might be justified by faith. See, we had to learn how all of that stuff was supposed to work. And, you know, of course, the Lord, the Messiah, the Father, the Creator could not explain to us the spirit. We were not spiritual beings and we could not understand spiritualism. So he put it in terms that we could understand, like clouds and skies, slaughtering of goats and sprinkling of blood and different stuff that we really never thought we understood. But, you know, it was there. All right, let's go on. But after that faith has come. We are no longer under the schoolmaster. Remember a, a few minutes ago, it's, it's kind of like, you know, things are going to change in the future. Well, just like when the Messiah came, they, they got to stop slaughtering goats. They got, got to stop hitting people in the head with rocks, even though it was the law to kill a person for certain things under, under, the, under the law. You know, you didn't have to do that because, because of the Messiah came and brought us a different, a different era, a different way of thinking. Now, he didn't get rid of nothing. He just changed it. It was just changed. Now, we don't hit people with, with material rocks anymore. We hit them with spiritual rocks and we kill them just the same. They're no longer allowed to communicate that that uh, message or that, you know, that message that we're trying to get out, you know, but, you know, they still walking around. They ain't dead. We ain't in trouble or whatever. Twenty six. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. Talking about us grafted in. You know, if we have faith, then we're all his children. You know, that's how we become his children is through faith. That's how we become grafted in is through the faith in the, uh, the Messiah. For as many as of you as have been baptized in Christ have put on Christ. So everybody who's been baptized in him have put on him. Uh, there is neither Jew nor Greek, which means there's no difference. There's no separation between the old Hebrews, the old Jews. Now, again, they have promises on their life, and the Lord's not going to take those promises away from him. But this is Paul talking, and Paul is trying to make us all inclusive, where we're all, you know, all part of the grafted in Israelites. So we're not Jews and we're not Greeks anymore. We are Israel. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither uh, male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Now, this is what we get with the Messiah. This is what he mean by fulfilling the law. But notice he's not taking anything away. Never do he say stop doing anything. And if you be Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now, we're talking about Abraham's seed. So what is the promise? Remember, he told, he told uh, uh, Abraham that his descendants were going to be in a foreign land, America. They were going to get floated over there in the bottom of what? Slave ships.
He told Abraham that his seed, he said they were going to put yokes of iron on him. Yokes of iron, that's, that's the uh, uh, iron shackles around your neck. You tell me what other people had iron shackles around their neck. He told me he was going to do that, and he was going to float them over to some country where they was going to stay over there for 400 years. And you remember Donald Trump just came up with the... Uh, the uh, 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 that commission that's supposed to come up with something to do in 2019 when these 400 years are up and then what's supposed to happen the Lord is supposed to judge this nation and all of those people are supposed to come out with the high hand well he's not just talking about spiritual I mean uh, um, bloodline Israel sure they're going to get these promises but also grafted in Israel can take advantage of the uh, promises of Abraham too you just graft it in you, you can do it you know what I mean? Just like some of the bloodline Israel have grafted themselves out with disobedience to the law, you can take their place and graft yourself in with the obedience to the law. Simple as that. All right. Uh, Romans 10, uh, verse 1 through 5. And we haven't talked about a lot of these uh, references. But it says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, which means they have passion and enthusiasm, but not according to knowledge. Meaning they're not using Bible verses to come up with, you know, their doctrine. What does he say? They're teaching the doctrine of men, you know. Um, he says, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For the Christ is the end, which or the goal, Christ is the goal of the law of righteousness to everyone that believeth. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to, to destroy but to fulfill. So it's the same thing. And then Galatians 3 and 24. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto the Christ that we might be justified by faith. Verse 5 said, And for Moses describeth the righteousness which is the law. Righteousness is the law. Uh, that the man which doeth those things should live by them. And that's Leviticus uh, 18 and 5. And let's go see what it says. We're going to do an exhaustive thing here. I know I spent a lot of time on this thing a year ago. I just never got to deliver it. So I'm going to deliver it now. Yes, say the same is good, a little bit rusty. With that, but let's see what it says. Leviticus 18 and 5 says, Ye shall therefore keep my statutes, my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. So it says the exact same thing. It's saying the same thing that Romans is saying. You know, we have, we, he says, um, The man which doeth those things and shall live by them. We live according to the law. And then people say we're legalistic or whatever. you dang right I'm legalistic. No, follow the law. Well, who, you know who you are who ain't following the law? People that I'm going to get your stuff. You, you're going to die in the tribulation and I'm going to get your stuff. Yeah, it, it, that, that's what the Bible says. It promises all of your, your stuff that you have been working for all of your life. You've been spending your whole life working for this material stuff, never stopping to think about the laws of the Lord, never stopping to think about the Creator and this book He put here for you to do. You're just going to go through your whole life and act like don't none of this exists and steadily get, your, get you all your material stuff, your boats and your yachts and your houses. I'm just saying, hey, this is Hermes Academy. We, we don't pull no punches over here. You want to know the truth? Whole truth? Nothing but the truth? Let's see what John chapter 2, 3, and 6 says. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments, meaning we obey his commandments. Verse 4 say, He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So what are they talking about down at the church? Talking about we got liberty. You got liberty to die in this tribulation. That's what you got the right to do. You got free will. You can do whatever you want to do, including be disobedient and get smashed by a huge rock coming out of space. Verse 5 said, but whoever keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected or made whole. The love of God is made whole in that person. Hereby know that we are in him. That's how you know him. That's how we know that we are his. Not because we can say Jesus loud enough or we got some Jesus peace or, or, you know what I'm saying, we got a hat to say Jesus is Lord or whatever we No. You got to keep the, you got to keep the law. Remember he said there's going to be a lot of people calling on his name and he's going to say, I never knew you. Well, this is why you never knew you because you never knew him because you didn't obey his commandments. He said, he that saith he abideth or continues in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked, meaning Messiah. Messiah never broke one single commandment. He the only person on the planet never broke one. He never broke one commandment, not one. And we say I to walk like he walked. Now, of course, we can't be as holy as he can, but we at least got to try, guys. 
what I'm saying? We can't be playing stupid talking about, oh, well, he, we can't keep all the law. We might as well not try to keep any of them. You know, you know that ain't the way it works. You know what I'm saying? 15, Matthew, talk back, going back to Matthew chapter 15. We're going to look at 7 through 9. It says, ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, these people draw not unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far, far from me. So, you know, everybody's saying they love the Lord, but you don't know him because you don't keep the commandments. You don't know him. We don't know him. He says, listen, nine says, but in vain they do worship me. So we worship him and in vain. What does that mean? I mean, your worship is worthless. All the time we spent down there at that church was worthless. That's what he's saying is vain. Take the word for it. We believe Matthew, don't we? We believe the whole scripture. He says vain is vain. Teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. That's what we're doing. They have man's commandments down there and they teaching it as if it's God's commandments. You don't believe me? Go down to the next time you go down to church. Watch don't he say, I'm about to bring you the word of God. But he don't read no verses. He don't he don't he ain't got no Bible up there. He got his notes and he talking. What 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 is the word of God? This mess is coming out of your mouth. As far as I'm concerned, I'm, I'm an old school kind of guy. This is this is the word of God right here. And yeah, I'm pounding on my Bible. That's the word of God. That mess coming out of my mouth. That ain't the word of God. This is what you hear across this thing. This is the word of coach in the fight. Except what I'm going to read by here in Deuteronomy. That's the word of God. 20, 27 and 26 says, Cursed is he that confirmeth not. Okay, so we're talking about cursing now. Confirmeth not, which it says, does not accept the truth. Okay, so cursed is he does not confirmeth all the words of this law to do them, and all the people say, say Amen. Now, th he got a whole lot of curses there in 26. One after one, he keeps saying that if you don't do this stuff, you're gonna be you're gonna be cursed. Cursed is he that don't keep the commandments. Cursed, you know, what did it say? I, I, I jump right to the main one. Anybody does not confirm the law, not or confirm all the words of the law to do them. Confirm all the words to do them. If you don't do this, you're cursed. Go look at, uh, what is that? Uh, Jeremiah 11 and 3. It's going to say the same thing. I just ain't got the internet. I'll do it for you. Proverbs 20 and 9 says, He turneth away his ear from hearing the law. Even his prayer shall be an abomination. And this, this is the show shot. This is the show stopper right here. He's saying, he's saying that your prayers are loathsome and detestable. That's what abomination means, and a, loath, a loathful and detestable act. So here you are praying for the Lord to help you. But look what he says. He that turneth away his ears from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. You need to stop praying. <laughs> what? You need to pray so you can get in the law or something. He's saying that your prayer is bad. Even your prayer. If you don't keep the law, even your prayer is bad. Revelations, oh, we're in Revelations now. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Well, that's what we're talking about, his commandments, that they might have right to the tree of life. Now, what is the tree of life? Now, remember, we heard about tree of life there in Genesis, right after you heard about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the tree of life. Remember, he took that away so we couldn't live forever. So blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may what? Live forever. That's what the tree of life is for, ain't it? So if you don't live, if you don't accept the commandments, you're not going to live forever. Well, leave it for yourself. And may enter through the gates into the city. That's Revel that's out of Revelations. It's referencing Revelation is referencing Revelations two and seven. Referencing Revelations twenty one and twenty seven. Two and seven. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, I will give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Now it is ta it's talking about the Ephesians, which we know the Ephesians is the backslidden church, right? If you don't know, hit me a link. I'll give you a class on, on uh, Revelations chapter 2 and chapter 3. I don't mind. I'll tell you who all these churches are and what you need to do about it and how we need to get some of that stuff straight. You know, but, you know, the tree of life is what we're talking about right here. And only those who keep the command. What does it say? Let's make sure we got it. Um, they have the right. The ones who keep the commandments have a right to the tree of life. So, you know, I can stand up and say, hey, well, well I live, live forever, you know. How would you like to stand up to the Lord and tell him with, with, with passion, I'm supposed to live forever? Well, you can't. If you don't keep the commandments, if you keep the commandments, you can. You know what I'm saying? You can start counting on it. You know what I mean? You can start counting on living forever. Not your spirit, not your material body. It's going in a hole. But, you know, your spirit man live forever. For without 
are dogs talking about people that don't keep you want to hear about people who don't keep, keep the commandments people talk about we got liberty do whatever they want to do i can work on the sabbath day i ain't got to worry about none of the lefisa Le leviticus 23 i can do whatever i want look what he talk look what he talk look, look how he describes the area where you live dogs sorcerers whoremongers murderers and idolaters and whoever loves to make a lie that's the company that you keep you don't keep the commandments okay well keep this company then you know what I'm saying? You don't want to be over her? But what the song say? I ain't got time to follow dudes that don't follow rules. Well, you know, you don't want to follow rules? You be down there with the dogs and the sorcerers and the whoremongers and the murderers, the idolaters and lying folk. That's where you belong. That's, that's what the law is. The law tells us not to do that stuff. It tells us not to, you know, not to be idolaters. Tell us not to be dogs, not to be sorcerers and not to be lying. But, you know, you don't you don't believe in that, right? You don't believe you're supposed to keep the law, right? Yeah, well, dogs. Deuteronomy 31 through 3 says, And it shall come to pass, when all these things are come upon thee, the blessings and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call to mind among all the nations whether the Lord thy God has driven thee, one of big old if statements, and shalt return unto the Lord thy God, and shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day. Now, this day is talking about my, Mount Sinai. You got you to gotta understand you, 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 Mount Horrible, wherever he's at here in Deuteronomy. He, he's back there in Moses with all those people walking around in buildings for 40 years. He's saying you, uh, you have to obey everything he said there. So and the, how, how else are you going to hear that? It ain't talked about in, in, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It ain't talked about in uh, Galatians or Ephesians. It ain't even talked about in Malachi, Habakkuk, Joel, uh, Jonah, nothing that. It's in Deuteronomy. It's in Numbers. It's in Leviticus. You know? And so if you don't believe that we're supposed to follow in that, any of that, then right here. That, and shall... And shalt return unto the Lord thy God, and shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day. Thou and thy children, with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Then, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity. See, we don't understand captivity now. Or we think we got jobs, huh? Yeah, well, you got to understand the word servant or the word slave was changed to servant in the Bible. So servitude to the boss, just like servitude to the Lord, is slavery. We are slaves. We're slaves to the Father. We're slaves, or if we if we don't want to do with the commandments, then we'll be slaves to the to the to the Mr. Charlie down there. But understand that the word itself was changed to confuse us. It used to say slave all throughout the Bible. Instead of saying a servant of God, it said a slave of God. But that word has a negative connotation, and we don't want to be considered slaves, so we change it to servants now. You know, well. <laughs> And he says, then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all of the nations. Right. Which means that he'll come and get you, even though we're out here in, in Egypt and in all of this worldly stuff. If we were to turn to him and say, you know, what, Lord, I'll keep your commandments, then he'll come and he'll help me. I promise you it's true. I've watched it happen. I've done it myself. You know what I'm saying that's why I speak with so much you know, power and passion in my voice when I'm talking about because I know it to be true. You know what I'm saying? I bang on more than this book. <laughs> I, mean, I know it's true. Whether the Lord thy God has scattered thee, because remember the scattering, that's part of um that's part of his plan where his his people will be scattered and then re recombined. We're here in Exodus 20 and 7. And he took the book of the covenant, an agreement between two parties. A covenant is agreement between two parties, it's a contract, talking about Exodus 24 and 7, and read it in the audience of the people, and they said, All that the Lord has said. We will do and be obedient. Now, this is kind of where we started. This whole thing is about the Book of the Covenant. What we've been doing so far is leading you up to the why you even should be paying attention to the Book of the Covenant. Well, you find out if you ain't you with the dogs, the murderers, the sorcerers, and all the other folk. You find out that your prayers ain't all an abomination. You find out that you're going to be considered least in the kingdom of heaven. There's a whole bunch of stuff associated with not keeping the commandments. We ought to be keeping the commandments, right? Well, look here. This is the Book of the Covenant. This right here, 24 verse 7, is the last verse of the Book of the Covenant. This is where it ends. Let me say that again. This is where the book of the covenant ends with this verse here. That's why I put it there because I, but what does is, what is, uh, Dale Carnegie say? Start with the end in mind. Well, yeah, there's the end right there and be obedient. All that the Lord has said will we do and be, be obedient. Okay, so that's the book of the covenant. So let's start right here where it actually starts here. Exodus 20. And one, it ends there in 27 and 7, 24 and 7. It, let me slow down. It ends there in Exodus 24 and 7. It starts in Exodus 20 and 1, talking about the book of the covenant. And look, surprise, surprise, the Ten Commandments. 
We got a Ten Commandments is right there at the beginning of this thing. And God spake, spake all these words saying, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Now, that's talking about, you know, um, the bloodline Israelites. But we understand we're grafted in Israelites, so he's talking to us too, right? Even if you don't understand uh, reincarnation or believe in reincarnation, you at least think we're grafted in Israelites, right? So he's talking to us. Verse 3 says, Thou shalt have no other God before me. Um, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above. Now, this is a deep, deep uh, uh, thing here because, look, he's saying this is the second commandment. The first one says you shall have no other gods before me, right? The second commandment says you shall not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven. Now, this is why a lot of y'all don't like uh, uh, the Ten Commandments or you don't even like coaching the fight because I'll bring this out. Any likeness of anything. Ain't that a picture? So he's saying you shouldn't be taking a picture of anything. You shouldn't be taking up any picture of anything that is in heaven that's talking about stars and clouds and, and, and stuff or birds or in the earth. That's talking about uh, uh, dogs and cows and people beneath the earth, you know, or in the water under the earth. So fishes, we ain't supposed to be taking pictures of nothing that he created. That's what he's saying there. You don't believe it? Watch what he says. First five says, thou shalt not buy down thyself to them nor serve them, for I am the Lord thy God. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, which means he demands exclusive worship. That's what he means by being jealous. He demands exclusive worship. You don't want to uh, give him exclusive worship? You got problems. Visiting the inequity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Now, I ain't going <laughs> to tell you what I think about that. I'm, I'm going to go on. And showing mercy unto the thousands of them that love me. But I'm going to tell you right here, he's saying thousands, guys. Wait a minute. When he was talking to these people at the bottom of Mount Sinai back in 14 something, 1400 BC, there was 2 million people there. There was 2 million people. 2 million men of war. Was it 2 million men of war, Stacey, or 2 million people? I think it was 2 million people, which was women and children. But look how he says, and showing mercy unto thousands. Uh, you need a few more zeros there, don't you, Lord? No, it's because only thousands of them love him. The rest of y'all love y'all cell phones and taking pictures and doing all kinds of stuff you don't, you don't, you ain't supposed to be doing. You love other gods. You love breaking these other commandments and junk. You know what I'm saying? But this one particularly here, he said, hey, this one is tied to idolatry. Uh, 27 and 18 and 22. Exodus chapter 20, 18 through 22. And all the people saw the thunders and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet. See, this, the, the, I jump down. Now, this is the same chapter that we're in up here. Now, here I'm in chapter 20, but I stopped in verse 6. Now, 7, 8, all the way up, he's going to keep talking about the Ten Commandments. I didn't list them here, but I did stop here. I did list 18. Why did you do that? Because notice a change. After he gave them the Ten Commandments, the people heard this, these thunderings. They saw this lightning, this noise, the trumpets. The mountain was smoking. The people got scared. And they said, hey, Moses, you're going to have to talk to the Lord for us because, you know what? If we talk to him, we're going to die. We can't, we can't handle that. Look right there. Uh, and they said unto Moses, speak thou unto us, and we will hear, but let not God speak with us, lest we die. Right. So that was that's significant. This was us talking. We stood before Moses and said, Moses, OK, you go talk to the Lord and then you come back and tell us what he says. Now, we would already heard the Ten Commandments, but that's all we got to. We couldn't take no more. And we said, Moses, we quit. You go talk to him and then come back and tell us. OK, that was in verse 18. And they said unto Moses, speak on uh, right there, lest we die. And Moses said unto the people. Fear not, for God has come to prove you. Many come to test you, and that his fear may be before your faces, that ye sin not. All right. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where the Lord was. So after the Ten Commandments, the Lord, the, uh, Moses went where the Lord was. The people weren't going. They're like, uh-uh, we ain't going no further. And the Lord said unto Moses, Thus thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, Ye shall have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. And he goes on to say, he tells him again, don't make no, no images. And he starts giving them a bunch of commands, a bunch of judgments, and a bunch of other stuff that goes on from chapter 20 through chapter 21, chapter 22, chapter 23, and chapter 24. You need to read that. Let's just go on. These are various verses from the book of the covenant. Now, I told you, the covenant is chapter 20, 21, 22, 23, and the first seven verses of 24. 
But here's some random verses. I just picked a few verses out of that. Just at random. Just to kind of see what kind of stuff is in there. And you can look at it. He said, he that smiled for man so that his die shall surely be put to death. Now, that's where the death penalty comes from. How would you have known that the death penalty is actually a commandment of the Lord? Yep. He who kills a man gets killed. He that smiteth his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. And he that stilleth a man or selleth him, or he that be found in his hand shall surely be put to death. Yeah, the death penalty for kidnapping. Didn't know that, did you? If an ox gore a man or a woman that they die, then the ox shall be seriously shall be surely stoned, and his flesh shall not be eaten. So you didn't know this. If you have an ox that kills somebody, you're supposed to kill the ox. Well, what if you knew that the ox, you know, had killed somebody before? He tells you down there, he and he has not kept him in, but he has killed a man or a woman. The ox shall be stoned, and his owner shall be stoned too. His owner shall be put to death too. Right. So these are rules. This is the covenant. Say, like, wait a minute, it's a lot of death in this covenant. Let's jump on down. If a man entice a man that that is not betrothed, I mean a virgin girl, she 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 he entices her and he sleeps with her and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. Which meaning you're supposed to get married. You done went over to you and tricked that little girl. Now now hey, that's where shotgun marriage comes from. You didn't know shotgun marriage was in twenty two sixteen, did you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. you better pay attention. He that sacrifices unto any God, save unto the Lord, only he shall utterly be destroyed. Now, I'm not going to hurt your feelings, but, you know, Santa Claus is a whole nother God, guys. And if you have a Christmas dinner, uh, let's go. He shall not afflict any widow. Look, at these are just various ones, you know. There, let's go down. This is the last one. Three times shall thou keep a feast unto the Lord in the year. You don't know three times in a, three times in a year you have to keep a feast unto the Lord. How many people know that? That's in the book of the covenant. That's you made a contract with the Lord. You are under. I ain't going to say you made it. You may not remember you made it, but you are still under it. This covenant never ends. Well, it don't end. I can't remember exactly when it ends. I know it's still in effect now. We're still under and we're still breaking it. That's why bloodline Israel is getting their butts kicked right now. All of these, you know, Africans, you, you, what, oh, they look like our cursed people. Yeah, this is why they curse because they will not receive. They will not uh, do these commandments. This is where their curses come from. You know, they they are the they are the Lord's uh, bloodline children. They definitely they definitely stood under Mount Sinai and heard these commandments. Yet they won't do them. Yeah. Well, look at Leviticus 26 and you see why, what's happening to them for not doing them. But we're going to go into uh, Deuteronomy chapter four as we get ready to wrap this thing. I can see the end, I believe. Chapter four says, but if from hence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God. Yeah, talking about this covenant. So now let me let me let me let me let you know what's going on. So the covenant was given in, in Exodus um, back there, we said 20 through 24, but it was broken right there after. The first thing he did was broke the covenant. You say, well, coach in the fight, you just said a few minutes ago that we're still under the covenant, but they broke it. Well, look here. You can get back in it. You still, I mean, not get back in it. You're still in it, but you can get back on the good side of the contract. It's like the, the contract has been torn up, but we can piece this thing back together. It wasn't burnt. He says, "For but if from... Then thou shalt seek the Lord thy God and shalt find him if thou shalt seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. And when thou art in tribulation, when thou art in tribulation and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days. OK, now we're talking about today. You say, well, that covenant was way long time ago. But no, look, here, it's talking about the latter days. If thou turn to the Lord thy God and shalt obey and shalt be obedient unto his voice. Okay, if you're going to be obedient to his voice, for the Lord thy God is a merciful God, he will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of the fathers which he swore unto thee. Meaning you can get back into the covenant. I did. It's great. I promise you it's great. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, you got to understand what you got to do. You can't just say, oh, them people got rid of the covenant. They, they, they broke the covenant. And it's, uh -uh. You, they broke it, but you're still under it. You still under it. It's, it's like I look at my children sometimes and they make mistakes and I come in and I point out the mistake. Hey, you were supposed to wash the dishes, but you ain't wash them. And he got this sad look on his face and I'm looking like, uh, are you yet going to go wash the dishes? Yeah, they broke the covenant, but you get back in it. You don't just play crazy and say, yeah, it's done. It's over with. Ain't nothing you can do. No, you go to verse, you go to chapter four and you read how you could get back in this covenant. The covenant we were just talking about chapter Exodus, you know, Exodus 20. A chapter um, Exodus 23 talks about the covenant angel. The covenant angel is what's going to get you through the tribulation. I talked about earlier. I alluded to the fact that, you know, nobody gives a video on how to make it through the tribulation. 
Exodus chapter 23 is how to make it through the tribulation, but you need 22 and 21 and 22 to go with it. But, you know, then you find out you know, if you are obedient, you get this covenant angel that's going to guide you. Hey, we're going to need some guidance, guys. Let's look at 23. See if 20. Let's look at Deuteronomy 28. See if there's any in there. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. He's talking about bloodline Israel now. He's talking about everybody Israel now. All you got to do is keep his commandments. It, it don't matter if you're from Poland or, or, or Haiti or wherever. It's all about the commandments, guys. It's not about, you know, your skin color or your hair type or whatever. It's about his commandments. That's all that's important is his commandments and whether or not we keep them or not. And all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Now, that's there in Deuteronomy chapter 28. And you, you see there we go from verse 2 to 15. I, I didn't share all them uh, blessings with you, but they're there. Guys, if you get back in the covenant. You can get, but you ain't in the cup. You say, well, we're broken. I'm going to stay broken. Okay, well, fine. You get to take a thousand year dirt nap. You're going to get recycled. You're going to be all right. Lord's coming back to save you or whatever. But, you know, you're going to be in a hole for a while. We're going to sit back and, you know, talk about how you were disobedient. And if you hadn't have been, you'd be here with us as we live in, in an environment that what? Ain't got no bad people. No, no, no evil going on. No, 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 uh, no wars, no pestilence, no diseases, no famine, no Satan. Even Satan is locked up for a thousand years. We're going to enjoy that. That's called the millennial age, guys. Well, that's what we're looking for. That's why, we, that's why we're doing these commandments. That's why we, we're so diligent about keeping these commandments is because of the millennial age, because of the promises of the Lord. And you don't know the promises. That's why you don't care nothing about the, 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 the commandments. Whose fault is that? It's the Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Dove. Just like he don't know the commandments and he can't tell you them, he don't know the promises and he can't tell you them either. You don't even know nothing about the millennial age. You're like, what is he talking about? A thousand year reign where, you know, there's, we're living in, in, in peace with, you know, all of this stuff. It's the promises of the Lord. But I skipped them all and I jumped all the way down here to verse 15 for some reason. It says, but it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe all, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. All these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Yeah. And then look at 26 over there. It's got some more curses over there, too. You know what I'm saying? It, it's, it's pretty bad, guys. He, he, at one point, what, you, you start eating your children or your children die? Yeah, uh, um, all kinds of bad stuff if you don't keep these commandments. Then we wonder why, you know, people burying their kids or whatever. Um, you need to read the Bible, guys. All right, this looks like the last one. This is uh, Exodus 23 and 20 through 22. It says, Behold, I send an angel before thee. This was that covenant angel I was talking about. I'm, I, I'm, uh, I got the internet now, but I don't really need it because I got this verse down here. It's right here in verse chapter 23. It's talking about this covenant angel. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way. So this guy's going to help keep us in the way, the path, you know. He's going to got to kind of be our lead and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared for thee. Now, what's the place that he's prepared for us? The promised land. Remember the promised land that he talked about? Well, we got the covenant angel to bring us there. You know, and, and verse 21 says, beware of him and obey his voice. You know, is he talking about the conscience? I don't know, guys. Y'all help me out. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. I think he's talking about our conscience. So now, okay, he is talking about our conscience. You know what? I'm going to stop playing with y'all. He's saying, right, because we just read it. If you, go, if you go to chapter 8 of the class I just put up, as a matter of fact, it's still, I think it's still processing over there. You know what I'm saying? 53%, you know, as soon as it's done, I'm going to upload it. You know, you can go in there and, and, and look at it, and it tells you that you have to keep his commandments to be spiritualized. You know, and that's what we're talking about here. This covenant angel is, is obviously the conscience. Look how he's talking here. Look at how he's saying here. He says, um... Uh, be way, obey his voice, provoke him not. You can't go against your conscience. That's what he means by if you blaspheme the Holy Ghost, you blaspheme your conscience if you want to. For he will not pardon your transgressions. For his name is, look, the Lord's name is there. He tells us to listen to his conscience. The Lord's name is there. You know what I mean? So, but you, but you don't know that if you don't keep his commandments. That's why you got so many atheists now. I go over here to Yahoo Answers. I do a lot of stuff. I go over here to Yahoo Answers and look at these atheists. You know what their favorite question is? The favorite question is, why are you Christians still praying? You know that it don't do you no good. Why do y'all do you know it? Ain't, well, it ain't doing you no good because you ain't keeping no commandments. 
Of course you don't. Of course you. Of course all of this seem alien to you. You are a bastard. You you ain't you ain't got your father is Satan. Of course, would you think you gonna just come in here and say some prayer and get you all your answers? Oh Lord, please let me get me a beer tonight for it. Well, he ain't answering your prayers, man. You, you just heard in Proverbs, he said your prayer is an abomination. If you if you don't keep the commandments, your prayer is an abomination. So you forget about it. And bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. You can go over to Psalms chapter 78 and 56 to see something about that. Um, it says, but if, thou sh but if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thy enemies and an adversary unto thy adversary. And I tell you, this is true, guys. What did he tell him? I will curse thee that, that curse you and bless them that bless you. He's talking about people who keep his commandments. If you don't keep his commandments, forget about it. He going to curse them that bless you and he going to bless them that curse you if you don't keep his commandments. That's the way that works. But if you keep the commandments, no. Huh. You know what I mean? You, know, you, you do something for me, the Lord going to take care of you. You know what I'm saying? You 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 uh call yourself going, you know, do some charitable deed for me. You gonna get you got a blessing coming. Where was I at somewhere? I, I went somewhere. I was at a gas station, and you know, um, I hate coins. I hate change. When I was a kid, I used to just throw them away. I still do sometimes. But now, you know, I just put them in the gas tank. I just grab all the change out of the ashtray and carry it in there and dump it all on the thing. Get rid of all that mess. One dollar bills too. That's the first thing to go in the gas tank is the coins and the one dollar bills, you know, because they are the most idolatrous part of them. All coins are graven images, and you should see all the wickedness on a one dollar bill. It's is really crazy but so i give that so i'm in there counting out these pennies one day and this dude say, sees me and i guess he thinks i'm you know um uh uh broke as i actually am and he said man let me pay for your gas and so he pays for my gas well i can't imagine how many blessings that dude got from that you know what i mean i'm i say thank you but i know his dude's taken care of you know what i'm saying he's driving a big old diesel truck he might got his whole big 90 gallon tank of diesel filled for free i don't know you know what I'm saying? The Lord curses those that curse me, and he blesses those that blesses me. Why? Because of the commandments. Ain't a whole lot to that. That's just the way it works. So how do we get it, though? You can talk about all these blessings and cursings all you want. You can go down into the Reverend Pastor Dick, Dr. Doug and talk all you want. You ain't seeing none. Why? Because you ain't keeping the commandments. He ain't keeping the commandments. He telling you not to. No. If you want to see these promises, guys, you got to keep his commandments. You have to. You have, there is no choice. There is no choice. You want to know how to, how to survive the tribulation? Exodus chapter 20, 21, 22, 23, and the first seven verses of 24.